And welcome back to You Rejoin at 120. I'm Jeff Cliff, and this is a series of 120 videos of things that I learned as a student at the University of Virginia. And today we're going to be learning about uh, what probably could be thought of as a logical fallacy, but we're going to frame it in a slightly different way. We're going to look at this idea of consequentialism and belief. And so I'm not, I, I, I tend to not view, uh, some people might call this the uh, appeal to consequence. Uh, but I don't want to justify this as calling it a fallacy. Really, it's a challenge. Uh, it's a problem. Can we do better than consequentialism in belief? Now, of course, I haven't defined any of these things yet, so let's see, what, what are we talking about here? So consequentialism is a, and you may want to, again, if you haven't seen any of the other videos in this series, go back and watch some of them because we're going to be building on some of the things we've already talked about. Uh, so it is a class of normative or a, a class of normative theories about actions. And in this particular case, we want to consider uh, the actions of, or the act of believing. So if we're viewing things in terms of co or consequentialism, then you can probably guess that the way that we're going to suggest that people behave, or the normative aspect, uh, is going to be based on consequences. So what, what it is we're, we're trying to see or talk about here is the idea of basing what we believe or the act of believing things purely and only on consequence. So this is a little bit better than, say, the argument from ignorance, where we're just believing things when we have no you know, basis for believing whatsoever. In this case, we're, we're, we're looking at believing things when there is a reason to believe them, but the reason to believe them is only the consequence of doing so, of only the, the things that would happen if we believed or did those things, etc. So, how is this going to look in practice? So if X is true, or X is true because if people didn't believe X, then bad things would happen. And this has sort of an, a, a, a deep appeal because we don't want bad things to happen. So it is tempting to just believe that X is true. And this is actually something kind of worth pointing out in that uh, the, the, the concept of these kinds of arguments kind of leave a gap, a, a, a a, a desire to solve problems, or a desire to act, or a desire to believe, uh, and it, uh, I guess an unclarity of what to believe uh, based on our desire, or unresolved desire, to avoid bad things happening. And like the 10 Ideas 50 Years video number 5, uh, I'm not actually going to tell you the solution to this problem. I'm not going to fill this hole uh, in that I'm leaving in your worldview by pointing out that these are not valid ways of coming to this belief. Uh, I could, but in this particular video, it is too complex to describe both the problem and the solution in the amount of time that we have. So we're only going to talk about the problem uh, and leave you, the, the listener or the watcher, uh, to ponder what could resolve the situation. But in this particular case, this is one of about six ways you can kind of approach this. So we want to avoid bad things, so we believe that X is true. What could possibly go wrong? 
a lot of things could actually go wrong in this case. So, for example, uh, we, we could believe uh, that, or we, we could have something where if, you know, people didn't believe uh, that, say, the king of France uh, in the late 18th century uh, was the son of God or the, uh, you know, God's representation of, on earth, then bad things would happen. And in fact, bad things did happen when people stopped believing, at least, uh, or giving lip service to that idea. People lost their heads, literally. Uh, and so there was this whole rev French Revolution thing. And good and bad things both came out of it. But if you were only focused on the bad things, you could easily try to make this particular kind of argument. And nevertheless, it wasn't true. The Sun King, there was nothing really special about him except his position in French society at the time. And so, if you were to believe otherwise, you would have been mistaken. And so, this is an example of what a, I guess, a implementation of this argument where the conclusion was false and the premises were true, where if you would believe it and consider it a valid form of argument, you would have been misled by it. Uh, so, now we have an example where this misleads us. We know that we should be skeptical of it, uh, but nevertheless, it still has this kind of persuasion over us. So let's look at some other examples. X is false, or X is false, because if people didn't believe or accept that X is false, bad things would happen. So again, this is actually kind of the same argument in a sense. All that's different is that instead of X being true, X is false. Uh, and again, it seems plausible that maybe uh, if you know we want to avoid these bad things, so we we should just keep believing this X uh, is being true, even you know. It, if, uh, or th or we, we should keep believing that X is false, because if we stop believing that X is false, then bad consequences would happen. And yet, if we look at, for example, global w the concept of global warming, uh, there's a lot of people, uh, especially uh, in relation to the, the fossil fuel industries, who believe that uh, global warming either isn't happening, humanity isn't in control of it, or causing it, when even if we were, there'd be nothing we could do to stop it, or to slow it down, or to kind of change in any way uh, what we're doing to the climate. Because if people didn't accept this, bad things would happen in the short term. I, we'd have to start implementing something like a carbon tax or carbon credits, which would basically be the same thing as a tax, uh, depending how you look at it. Uh, or we'd have kind of extra costs in dealing with the northern regions, and the cost of milk in the north would be higher. And all these horrible things would happen, which is probably true. Uh, there would be a lot of bad things that would be happening if we internalize the externalities of climate change. Nevertheless, climate change is happening. So if we just purely believe these things based on this argument, we would have been mistaken. And sometimes there are horrible consequences to believing things or, or to having beliefs come out. And it's unfortunate, but we can't deal with those consequences if we don't admit that what the truth is to start with. We can't get to the point where we're handling the consequences if we pretend that they don't exist. Here's another kind of variant of this problem. I wish X were true, because X would be cool, or X would be fun or positive. Uh, a lot of people in kind of uh, positivity circles or kind of optimism, pro-optimism circles will, will believe these sorts of things, where you know they'll they'll wish that say unicorns exist, uh, and because it would be really cool, uh, and therefore unicorns exist. Of course, this argument is bogus. It's totally bogus. There is no connection between our wishing 
uh, or are merely wishing for something positive and that something happened. If we wanted that something to happen, we would, in addition to having to wish for it, actually have to go through the work of making that thing happen. There's the, uh, the, the cause of that thing happening is both our desire to do so and our means to do so being available to us and actually acted upon. So there's these kind of missing pieces of the puzzle here. The, the means, intent, uh, and actually going through with the act and doing it. Uh, that those are the three things you need in order for something to happen. Merely having the intent is insufficient. And as other videos in this series, this is related to other, or other videos uh, that we make here. Uh, so for example, this is related to the gambler's fallacy because we would like to win. You know, if we go to the casino, we'd love to have the experience of putting the quarter in, uh, you know, getting the token, putting the token on the table, and then, you know, having the, our number on the roulette wheel come up. You know, it's fun. We, we get the, the nice dopamine or whatever reward of, of guessing correctly and predicting the future enough to have the host reward us for doing so. But that doesn't mean that that is going to happen. More likely than that is that we're just going to lose our money. And the casino exists because people believe that what they want is going to happen, even though the evidence is such that it's not going to happen. So don't let yourself be suckered in by wishful thinking. It's related to moving the goalposts, because uh, when we want something to be true, sometimes we're, especially if we're discussing something with another person, we will raise the kind of uh, level of evidence required uh, for people trying to disprove that that thing is going to happen. Uh, and especially when it becomes personal uh, and for things we'd like to be true, uh, we, we are, are often a lot less skeptical of those things than we are of things we would not like to be true. So it's also related to the argument from fear or uh, the argument for emotion, because it's, uh, again, if we wish that something is not going to be, be happening because of the bad consequences, we're basically basing our belief on our fear. We're, we're deriving what we should be doing, what we should be believing, purely based on emotion alone. And although there may be some room for emotion in directing our action and directing our beliefs, this isn't it. And we're purely going to be shortcutting our, our ability to reason about things if we just draw conclusions right from our gut emotion. It's related to the argument from vacuum, uh, as kind of discussed. This is actually kind of a generalization of the argument from vacuum, because you're, you're arguing that the consequence of being hit by a stick justifies your, your non-belief or belief in something. And so this is uh, kind of saying, even for things that are positive, we shouldn't necessarily purely base our belief on those things. Uh, it's also a generalization of the is-ought problem, uh, where we can conclude what is based on what we feel ought to happen, uh, given that it's going to be happening to us, uh, or at least to someone we care about, or to some group, or something we want to happen. So again, we're, we're kind of bridging this is-ought gap uh, between what we wish ought to happen and what we is happening, or what we expect is happening. Now, there, I, I, I mentioned that this is, I'm going to leave kind of a gap in your, your ability to address how to actually derive what actions to take, but there is kind of one uh, kind of valid case where uh, you could use this argument, and it would be arguably valid to do so, and that is in reference to nihilism and global skepticism, where if you believe that nothing exists, or if you believe, or, or if someone you're talking to claims to believe that nothing exists, or that nothing matters, or that they themselves and their life don't matter, uh, what you can do is you can uh, maybe swing a book at them or something, or hit them upside the back of their head, uh, and continue to do so until they flinch. Because by their nature, they are, in fact, arguing from consequence. And so there must be something of value to them that they are making this flinching movement. Uh, now, they could, of course, argue that that's just their body doing that, but you could probably conduct other experiments and come across something that they do actually want uh, and kind of try to take that from them, and they will resist. And that will be 
evidence that they are not, in fact, nihilists, and that therefore nihilism doesn't exist, or at least nobody is taking it seriously enough, uh, or at least the people who are are dead and or dying, which I'm sure they wouldn't care about either way. Um, so there's that. So what are some examples of this? Like, where, where does this come up? Um, so the first kind of example is uh, encryption. So encryption makes it possible for terrorists to build existential threats to humanity, like unfriendly AI. Therefore, we must not believe in group theory, which would allow encryption and you know, terrorists to learn encryption uh, based on the relationships between mathematical objects known as groups. Of course, this is an appeal to consequence. We can't not believe in something as primitive and as simple and essential to our universe as mathematical objects. Groups are so general and so broad that the, the, uh, we're, we're going to discover them in many different contexts, in many different areas, in many different languages, uh, in many different domains. Uh, if we look hard enough and think hard enough, they will emerge in our thought process as all other parts of mathematics have done so far in our history. Uh, and so that alone is, should make us really skeptical about kind of denying their validity. But even if that weren't true, and if it, it was harder to kind of achieve them and acquire them, and acquire understanding of them, we're still basing what we should believe about something as primitive and as simple as math based on the contingents, uh, or the contingency of these, these terrorists. Uh, so again, we're, we're basing our, uh, or appealing to consequence, uh, and this is kind of a mistake to do so uh, in this case. What's well, another example? Uh, so you could make the argument that, uh, or a theist could make the argument that uh, if God did not exist, then the basis for all morality would be lost, and the world would be a horrible place where maybe social Darwinism is actually happening in practice, and you know, people are being mean to each other, and there's no consequence for doing so at all outside of the social consequence, uh, and so therefore God must exist. Well again, we're, we're, we're crossing the ought is barrier here. We're, we're saying that God is because of something ought, uh, or at least ought not. Uh, we're, we're, we're making the claim that you know, because that it would be unpleasant to think about the universe as it actually is, we're going to pretend that it isn't that way, and just kind of pretend believing in this thing that prevents that view of the universe from being believed. Again, the universe may be so savage. You know, you go watch the Pearl Jam do the evolution video. There are horrible things that happen. That does not mean that we should not believe that they're happening. And it also doesn't mean we should partake in them. Uh, but again, we, we, we don't want to just believe something to pretend that things are a better place. Uh, if we even, you know, if, if we admit to ourselves that we are thinking beings, uh, with a desire to learn the truth. So you could say, you know, it would be horrible for my child to get measles, therefore God would never allow that, therefore I won't get my children vaccinated. Again, this is an appeal to the consequence, where uh, you're, you're, you're saying that because your, your view of the world wouldn't per allow uh, bad things to happen, uh, that those bad things will not happen to you. But you're missing the point that the reason those bad things won't happen is often because of the acts of people preventing them from happening, i.e. the doctors who actually immunize people and put down diseases like measles so that people can live safe lives and not have children die near them of measles. So again, there's you have to consider Sure, we all have motives not to have our children or the children that we care about dying of something as horrible as measles. Uh, the intent um, or, or the action. This here is what's missing in this case. Uh, we, we, we don't actually go out and do the, the, the thing in this case. The, 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 the thing that would prevent people from getting the measles is this middle part, in addition to these other two things. You're, you're, so if you conclude not to take this action, 
you're, you're missing the whole picture of what prevents measles from happening by assuming that this isn't important. And then, of course, the choice to actually do so, which, again, is, is not in effect in that particular example. What's another example? Quote, I don't think that there will be a nuclear war. If I believed that, I wouldn't be able to get up in the morning. I mean, how depressing, unquote. Again, nuclear war is actually a real possibility. The two biggest nuclear powers on the planet right now are in a hot fighting war. They don't admit it publicly because it would very quickly escalate to a hot nuclear war, which it is not currently. Uh, nevertheless, there have now been thousands of people, uh, soldiers on both sides who have died in a fight that has currently been contained in one country in, the mid, I guess, in the middle of Europe, uh, which we should be very thankful for because, again, nuclear war is possible. There are a lot of things preventing it from happening, uh, but a lot of those things depend on other kinds of war not escalating to the point where they lead to it. Uh, those, those institutions are under strain right now, and we should be very seriously thinking about uh, the consequences of our current situation. Uh, not putting our head in the sand and ignoring it because it's unpleasant to think about. On the flip side of the, the kind of theist issue, uh, from uh, you, you could also argue that uh, God existing would mean apostates would be killed, uh, that you could you know go out and hang witches, that you could do all these horrible, horrible things, uh, that maybe gay people shouldn't have rights or something like that. And because we find these outcomes repugnant, we could conclude, therefore, that God does not exist. However, that, again, would be appealing to consequence. And that if we disagree that this concept, that this you know, omnipotent thing, has a, a you know, worthwhile uh, existence in our minds, uh, then we should actually justify that with an argument that isn't just that we don't like the consequence of it existing. Uh, and so... It's worth you know, pointing out that this isn't just purely a mistake that theists make. This is also something that uh, people of all kinds make, uh, and you should be wary of that. There's also kind of a fourth part, which is also kind of worth pointing out. That in addition to the motive or desire to change something, the intent to actually act and the action involved, the, the actual choice made to do the act, there, there's also kind of this thing, I don't really have a good word for it, uh, but it's, it's worth pointing out that uh, beings can kind of reflect on themselves, and it's worth kind of considering that, as, you know, human beings at least, uh, can consider uh, their choices in light of their actions, in light of their motives, that they can consider their motives in light of their actions and their choices, and vice versa. And that if you're purely looking at things in terms of consequences, uh, you also want to consider that you're, you, know, you as, as an object of thought is part of this thought process. And sometimes that, you know, including that in your consideration will, will help you make decisions about what should or should not happen. So, in general, uh, and as a concluding remark, you're probably going to commit this fallacy one way or the other, uh, but some people will intentionally do it. They'll do it on purpose, uh, and when called on it, they won't deny it. They'll, they'll say that they, you know, belief in, or faith is important, and you should hold it as a virtue, or that, you know, your, your believing in wishful things will make those things come true, or that, you know, positivity makes people's lives around you better, uh, and all the, the sorts of things like this. Uh, and there may be a, a grain of truth in, in relation to, say, social facts uh, or to the emotional state of people around you, but for the most part, we live in a world that can, uh, where understanding can really help, and we can deal with a lot of problems if we choose to. Uh, if we have all of these things kind of aligned towards making something work, uh, a lot of the time we can do something about that. Sometimes we can, but it's worth trying. Uh, so, uh, go out actually try to address problems like nuclear war instead of ignoring them, putting your head in the sand. Uh, as kind of a side note, uh, this Sunday is Petrov Day, so 
Uh, hopefully those of you out there uh, should Google Petrov Day and uh, celebrate because this is definitely related to that. So um, hopefully you enjoy this video. As usual, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask anywhere where this video is posted. Uh, and uh, there should be a Bitcoin donation address at the bottom here so that you can fund our whiteboard marker supply. And uh, we'll see you next video.